Okay, so this video is going to attempt to cover uh, the alkenes topic of the AQA AS chemistry in the unit 2. Um, it's not going to touch on electrophilic addition, there's a separate video for that. It's purely just about alkenes. Um, what they are, a very small, about, very small amount about reactions, but not too much because most of that's covered in the uh, electrophilic addition video. Um, a bit about testing for them, uh, and then finally a bit about isomerism, which is a uh, Probably the more difficult part of the alkenes, but still want to get your head around it, uh, should be fine. Uh, so first off, what is an alkene? Well, an alkene is a uh, it's a hydrocarbon, um, which means it's it, it's made of just hydrogen and carbon, so only hydrogen and carbon. Classic. Um, it contains a carbon-carbon double bond. This means it is classed as unsaturated. Uh, which is quite useful. So when you hear about unsaturated and saturated fats, the unsaturated is linking directly to the fact that we have a carbon-carbon double bonds, whereas in saturated fats we have carbon-carbon single bonds. Um, it doesn't mean all the bonds either in, in alkenes are double, it just means it has a... Uh, you can have multiples, and things called dienes, but for the sake of A-level don't worry about that. Um, a double or carbon-carbon double bond is uh, going to give the unsaturation, which is going to be the functional group of an alkene. Uh, and it has the general formula of CnH2n. Uh, so, e.g., the sort of classic one would be meth uh, methane. Ethene can't have methane because it only has one carbon, therefore it can't have the double bond. Uh, C2H4, propane, C3H6. That's a four, it's a terribly drawn four. There we go. So that's generally a little bit about um, sort of alkenes and the way they work. Um, to draw you uh, a little alkene here, so this would be ethene. Key thing when you draw in alkenes, make sure you're sticking with that carbon having four bonds. One, two, three, four. This one's got one, two, three, four. It's very easy, particularly when you're doing longer uh, alkene molecules. It's very, very easy to... Um, to get confused and to stick a methyl group on or a hydrogen where it's certainly with hydrogen where it's not required as such you're sort of ruining it check back once you've drawn your alkene with the CnH2n uh, and you, you that's a simple check to make sure you've actually drawn it correctly you've got the right number of hydrogens and carbons and, and count the carbons and the bonds that they've got making sure it equals four um, what else test so test for unsaturation or test for alkenes if you like as well there is uh, bromine water which is actually covered as I said in the electrophilic addition video uh, as to sort of how the mechanism of that reaction works but in terms of kind of what goes on the bromine water we add it um, to our alkene and we find that it goes from orange to oh, I haven't got a colourless colour otherwise it wouldn't work would it uh, it goes from orange to colourless, and that is this test for unsaturation. Okay, or well, the test for an alkene. Very, very straightforward. Uh, this guy, one last thing here. Uh, this is classed as a planar, planar molecule, or the planar, the carbon carbon double bond is planar. That means it exists within a single plane. So if this was a sheet of paper, and actually for ethene, this works perfectly as well. If this was a sheet of paper, though, around this, it would lay flat. As compared to something like methane, which has a very three-dimensional structure to it, uh, this is planar. It, it would lie flat on a piece of paper. Obviously, the groups attached could go in different dimensions um, or different planes, but this is a planar group itself. Now, this is very important. This group here, this uh, the functional group of the of the alkene, the carbon-carbon double bond, because the fact that it has this carbon-carbon double bond, and if you've ever done this in molly mods, you'll see it, it's it's quite clear. And they're very very good molly mods for lots of things, but they're really good for this in particular. If you have a single bond, you can find that you can twist things all over the shop. If you've got a double bond here, you've got a carbon-carbon double bond, then actually what you get is what's classed as restricted rotation around that double bond. And whilst you might think, well, I have no idea why that would be even remotely useful, depending on what's attached here, we then can have this type of isomerism forming as a result of that. So it forms as a result of the restricted rotation around the carbon-carbon double bond. And the isomerism that forms as a result of that is, let's find myself a nice colour. Oh, nice. It's EZ isomerism, um, which is, which falls under the family of stereo isomerism. 
Um, what you'll find is oh, draw a fairly poorly done thing now. So stereo isomerism is the general type of isomerism. EZ isomerism or geometric, as it's also called, uh, is a is a type of stereo isomerism. As is and this is a two optical isomerism. So, stereoisomerism. Well, what is stereoisomerism? Well, stereoisomerism is isomerism which forms when molecules have the same structural... Don't start putting molecular. It's it's annoying because I would prefer to put molecular, but mark schemes and all the rest say structural underlined, so you must have it. Same structural formula, but the atoms or groups attached have different spatial arrangements. Oh. So what that means is that the groups attached are arranged differently in space and that's where this idea of stereoisomerism, kind of what this actually is. This is our definition right here for stereoisomerism, which has been asked in one paper, which I'll show you uh, at the end. So, EZ isomerism, well, what is it? What does it look like? Well, let's go down here. Find a nice colour. Purple's good. Okay, so I'll draw out ethene to start with. Now, ethene does not have stereoisomerism, no EZ, I'll just abbreviate to EZ, no EZ geometric isomerism there. The reason being that no matter what happens here, you always have the same molecule. You could switch it around this way or that way, it's always going to be the same because it's got these hydrogens bonded or attached to the carbons across the double bond. The same thing would be true for propene, where if we look here, whilst it has a slight difference in that it has a methyl group attached here, Obviously, remember, although although it's been drawn as a methyl group, do still remember that this is still one, two, three, still a chain here. Okay, it's still a chain. Don't say, oh, it's two methyl ethene because it's not. It's or one methyl methyl ethene. It's not at all. It is still the longest chain. It tends to be drawn like this because it makes it very easy to see um, how the isomerism is shown. But in this case, there is no EZ isomerism because again, no matter what happens, no matter how you turn this molecule around, it's still ultimately the same molecule because we've got these particularly here these hydrogens being there uh, it's the same it, it ends up forming as the same molecule so it's just flipped over however and that might be a little bit confusing but this this make more sense in a second hopefully if I go one down and I now go to butene which I can't just call butene because now it has the four carbons needs to fall in either but one or butene but particularly butene always stick with this carbon carbon double bond here there's my methyl group, there's my methyl group, hydrogen, hydrogen. Now if I draw the same, but I switch it round very, very slightly, these are now different molecules. And that's the key point. No matter how many times you turn this or flip it or whatever, you will never get it to form this one. Okay, It will never be this molecule. The reason being the restricted rotation here stops this, this and this actually switching. They are unable to do that. So, unable to switch. And the same applies to this side because of the restricted rotation. Now, you need to be able to name the various isomers that are, that are available. The way, the easiest way for well, I'm going to, I'll give you a couple of ways to do it. The easiest thing to look at is look for different groups. Now, this being but two in here, uh, what we can see is hydrogens here are on this on the same side, and in this case the methyls on the same side. So if you've got a very simple situation where you've just got hydrogens and then other groups, it's the other groups that you're looking at, and I'll give it, I'll give you a better way to do this in a second. So if the other groups are on the same side, okay, and I'm looking across here, the same side of the double bond then we would say this is the Z isomer. Here, if they are across, 
the dot of one, opposite side, we would call it the E isomer. These come from German words, I believe. This, I think, is do salmon, which means together, supposedly, and this is entgegen, which is opposite, although I'm not entirely sure that's true, but I'm sure someone can correct me. Um, so Z together, same side, E across different sides. There are various ways of, of remembering this. Um, uh, Chem Guide's got quite a good page where he gives, he gives I think, three ways of remembering it. I'm not going to go into them. I just think if if you want to come up with a way, if you want to look it up, brilliant. But in terms of this, this that's Z, that's E across. Um, if you if you start looking at other sort of books and older books and older specifications and things, you'll come across the terms cis and trans as well. Not required for the um, anything in the A level actually nowadays at all. But the way this worked is that they were sort of, and it's still still very much used cis and trans. It's not quite as simple as as I'm making out, but when applied to situations like this, trans, um, sorry, the Z is cis, C-I-S, and the E is trans. Okay, so just in case you do come across it in terms of uh, alkenes, that's what it means. It's the same, in this case, uh, with alkenes, it's the same. Z or cis being the same side, trans or E being across. And when you think about it, trans, you know, the transpennine way or whatever, it's going across the pennines. Um, so it's an across the double bond, or transatlantic flight is going across the Atlantic. This is a trans double bond grouping. I don't, don't know. It's, it's gone. This, these are very much more simple examples. Then, often in the A level, and I don't think I've ever seen. I'm going to show you some other more difficult ones, which I don't think I've ever seen asked. But you're going to get normally hydrogens here, provided the hydrogens. I'll make sure just to explain this one more time. Provided the hydrogens are not both attached to the same carbon, in which case there is no EZ, provided the hydrogens are attached to different carbons, and then on that carbon there is another group, in this case methyl. It could be an ethyl, propyl, whatever, and the same is true on the other side. It needn't be an, a methyl, it could be a chlorine or a bromine, which I'll look at in a second. That's when your EZ is going to become, uh, become apparent. The way to name it then would be Z if it's on the same side, E if it's on the other. And this would just be Z but -tuene, and this would be E but -tuene. So the Z or the E goes at the start. Right, another way to work this, uh, particularly in an example where you might kind of go, oh, I'm not really sure how this is going to work. If I had, say, a carbon double bonded to a carbon with a hydrogen, with a bromine, with a fluorine, and with a chlorine. Now you might say, well, I don't know what's happening, because I've only got one hydrogen. And I could remove that and put another element, but I'm going to stick with hydrogen for now. This still will have EZ isomerism. But how do we name it? Well, one way to do it is to look for what's called highest priority groups. Um, this is... A quite an easy way to do it, actually. It's quite an easy thing to do. It's essentially the, the thing that's attached to the carbon, and we deal with this on each side. So look for the highest priority on, on each portion here. So the highest priority would be the largest uh, relative atomic mass. So largest... Oh yeah. So in this, bromine is my largest relative atomic mass. On this side, on this side... My uh, blah, 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 trying to what I have chlorine is my highest, I believe. Chlorine, I'm pretty sure that's right, isn't it? Thirty-five point five. Yeah, fluorine. Yeah, chlorine is my highest relative atomic mass there. So these are my highest priority groups. So in this case, this form right here would be my Z isomer because my highest priority groups are on the same side of the double bond. So it's a two-step process. Look for what's attached to the single carbon first and then do the same with the other side and then look at how those things, the highest priority groups, are attached in reference to the double bond. Same side, Z. Obviously if the CL was up here and the F was down here then that would be my E format. The same principle can be applied to this stuff previously. Um, and you might say, well there's a group there, how does that work? It's just the first atom of the group. So in this case, carbon has the highest priority because it has a relative atomic mass of 12. Hydrogen only has one. Therefore, these are my highest priority groups. The methyls here, and again, the methyl there, the methyl there. So it's just another way of looking at things, um, but the same principle is true um, in both cases. These are much more easy examples when we've got the hydrogens present, or the same thing on 
different sides and all the rest of it. Um, here it gets a little bit more tricky. I don't think I've seen that come up before, um, but it's not difficult if it does. Highest priority, largest relative atomic mass, and hopefully that sort of makes some sense. So just to put a little bit extra in there, um, the whole CIP, the Kahn Ingold Prelog Priority Rules, I'd actually in the previous video before sort of the change specifications, I'd actually explained it um, as is, and although I think I say a few seconds ago, obviously because I'm adding this in afterwards, about how it's not come up before, it is now listed in the new specification, so you must know that. It's not over difficult, it's just that atomic number. Um, the only example I do want to show would be one where maybe we've got a situation that you have, well I'll, I'll draw it and see, so if we had something like that, so we've got our, our alkene here, and then we've got say methyl group there, uh, in fact, I will, I'll draw that out, no I won't, no will I? Yeah I will do, Raid's not really working very well, yeah, well, um, yeah, we'll draw it out fully. It makes it a bit more clear what I'm about to say. So, in this situation, in terms of priority, again, we remember we sort of we we deal with this half in this down the middle, a solid line. Highest priority is here because it's got the highest atomic number, and that's that's a fairly straightforward one there. This side though. We look to what is attached to our carbon, uh, we've got a carbon and we've got another carbon, that doesn't really work. So we've got some issues there uh, as to sort of what we can do. So what you've got to do really though is you've just got to keep going down the chain and see what happens. So if we imagine this is the chain this way, carbon followed by a hydrogen, here we've got a carbon attached to another carbon. So this here is the highest priority side because we've got a carbon attached to another carbon uh, and the, the thing attached to this carbon, in this case this carbon, sorry there's lots of the word carbon, this carbon has a higher atomic number than, um, sorry, higher a mass than the hydrogen there. So this would be your, your larger side, so your highest priority portion there. I could see them asking something like this in an exam, I think they're sneaky like that. Um, so this would be the Z portion, because again if we now imagine on the, draw the line horizontal, these are on the same side, Z, if these were switched it would be the E, but this is the Z portion, so that's that's just a sort of an extra little bit about this whole new uh, named Khan Ingold prelog stuff, but it is still in the video as per before. There you go. Uh, I'm going to show some exam questions now, uh, go through a couple, uh, and then that'll basically be the end. So here's the first question. So, first question, uh, this is from a paper in uh, June 12th, this is the June 12th paper, question 7AII, draw structures for the E and Z stereoisomers of hexthreene. Well, first of all, I'd just jot down on the side, I'd go hexthreene, what is it? Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then I'd put my double bond in, so 1, 2, 3, there's a double bond there, boom. That is my hexthreene, okay? Draw it out, E, so, focus it around my double bond, and the same for the Z, focused around my double bond, and then basically I'm going to add the various things. Now, in this case, I've got hydrogens attached there, just the one hydrogen, and then I'll treat these as my ethyl groups, because it's much easier that way, because when I actually factor it out this way, I can, I can split them slightly. So, my E form, well my E means I must have opposites across, because remember I'm going across the double bond, so I want my highest priority groups to be across, well in this case that's going to be my ethyl groups, so my C2H5, uh, I'll just do H5C2, H and H, boom. Straight away you can see we have the highest priority there, highest priority there, and they are across the double bond, therefore this is my E format, my Z is going to be on the same side, so H5C2, C2, H5, H, H, boom. Two relatively easy marks there, quite nice marks to get. Um, state the meaning of the term stereoisomers. Already defined that back earlier in the video. Uh, once more though, same structural formula, different spatial arrangement of atoms 
or groups. Nice easy point there. So another two marks. There's four marks there just for a bit about alkenes. Okay, whip across now. Different paper. This is a paper from June 2010. Uh, this is a bit of a different kind of question. 6A part 4. Draw the structure of the E stereoisomer of 3-methyl pentuene. Again, I draw 3-methyl pentuene out. So, 3-methyl pentuene. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. Terrible. Um, pentuene. Oh, God. So, uh, what do we do over here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, pentuene. I'll do it here. Pentuene. 3 methyl, therefore, is going to be there. So my 5 carbons, pentuene, 3 methyl. Very nice. Now, basically, I've just got to draw the E center isomer of that. So again, base it around the carbon carbon double bond. And now I'm going to have 4 bonds off there. Now, here, let's draw my CH3 group here. And let's draw my. This is going to be an ethyl group up here. And now we've got to think, well, What's going to go across? What's going to be my E isomer and what's going to be my Z? So this is what we've got on our right-hand side. And this is a little bit of a sneaky question, actually, from AQA. Um, because what they've done here is they've given you... We, we know, basically, what we have remaining here is our methyl group, uh, which is this, uh, and our hydrogen there. So basically, we need to decide which of these hydrogen or methyl groups is going to go on which side. Now, the E is the across group, so I know that my highest priority route must go here. In this case, you probably would work the... Well, let me back up a second on that. I've, I've kind of skipped a step. Whilst what I've said previously stands true, it took it, even with the highest priority stuff, still was maybe a slight simplification. The reason being that I said, well, what happens when we have the carbons or... Sorry, when we look at the carbon carbon double bond, the atoms that are attached are to this carbon or this one, we look for their atomic number. Now, in this case, the carbon and the carbon both have the same atomic numbers. Um, in simple terms here, because I'm trying to out of word this without it being really confusing. When we draw the methyl group, ethyl group, sorry, out, we can see that we have a C with two hydrogens and a C H3 attached as well. Therefore, when we compare it to the fact that we have only CH3 there, this group here has the lowest priority because it only has the three hydrogens, whereas this has two hydrogens and then another CH3 also attached. So a bit of a mean question. So in this case, this is the highest priority group. Um, out of the hydrogen and the, car and the methyl group of this side, we know for that one, the methyl is going to be the highest priority. Um, so it looks something like that. A much more difficult, I mean, for one mark, it's actually quite a tricky question. Um, probably kind of makes sense, though, but in terms of explanation, it's a bit weirder. So again, highest priority, at first glance, you might think, oh, well, they're the same because they've both got carbon. I guess in some ways you could say, in a simple sense, because this is a bigger group, it has the highest priority, um, which defines this one over this one on that side. This side, we are looking for an easier one, for example, because we know we've got the methyl, which is higher priority, and the hydrogen obviously across the double bond here and therefore we've met the uh, requirements of our e isomer there so and actually quite what well, the see it appears like an easy question to start with a little bit more tricky um, when you sort of look into it at uh, the last question is this one so identify the feature of the double bond in e pent 3 n 2 o doesn't matter what it is uh, and blah blah blah, blah that causes these two compounds to be stereoisomers. Well, for start, we know we've got E and Z, so it looks like a really long, horrible molecule. Oh, God, and it might do a picture of it. Now, we've got a thing up there. It's one of these two. I think it's that top. Yeah, it's that top one there. Um, all we're talking about here is restricted rotation around... Boom, one mark. Easy money. I'm not going to do any more questions mainly because all that's going to happen is just going to be repetition of the same sort of thing again and again. Um, by all means, stick in comments and all the rest if you have any problems. Uh, I do hope that's been of some help, though. Uh, and there you have it. That's Alkenes.